next one goes, it's gonna be like 300 times faster than the waistlines. All right, th these little winkies here are, are, I don't know what they call them, I call them benders, but it eliminates the use of a fitting. So uh, a fitting has a little more friction loss than just the pipe bending. And it's handy, you use less fittings and such and whatnot. If you ever hang around a plumber that's plumbing, you, you always hear him saying, hot's on the left, cold's on the right, hot's on the left, cold's on the right, to keep track of what pipes he's dealing with. Same with, I've got hot on the bottom, cold on top, and I have to always keep my holes that way if I can help it. And if you rotate right around back to the shower pipes coming in, see, I've done the holes high and low so that they don't crisscross. See how the hot goes to the left? Mm -hmm. So a little bit of pre-thought keeps your plumbing neater. When the pipes come blue and red, that's probably helpful. But oh, yeah, that but helps a lot, and that's for the millennials. <laughs> Sometimes it, it depends on, you know, I just what the whatever what I order that day. I don't really care what color it is. <laughs> this white water line that Phil is installing is known as PEX pipe. It's a plastic, but actually Google tells me. It's a cross-linked polyethylene, and it is really incredible stuff. If you've been with our series for any length of time, you may have seen Phil doing this sort of work back in the crawl space just before we started framing the walls. Well, this is more of the same type of thing. It's running the water pipes, hot and cold, to each fixture in the house where hot and cold water will be needed. You put the knife right up against there, and that's why my thumbnail's so short. <laughs> Because I've worked with Phil for 20 years, and I know just how capable he is, we don't have a set of mechanical drawings for this house. In other words, Phil is doing this installation without plans or instruction. These little guys fit half and three quarter, and they're nail-ons. And they're where you need to clamp the pipe every 32 inches. And that's the code here. I don't know what your particular code is. It's nice to keep these long and sweep and generous and relaxed. If you happen to kink this pipe real hard, you can warm it up with a heat gun, it'll turn clear, and then go back the way it was made. Now if you're planning on doing a plumbing job like this, and you are not an experienced plumber like Phil, or you do not have a long-term relationship with an experienced plumber like Phil, I highly, highly recommend that you pay an engineer, or possibly a plumbing contractor, to make you that set of plans that detail how the plumbing system should be installed. It will not only give you a parts list and make sure you're not wasting a lot of time running back to the parts house, it will show you the most efficient routes for getting the water everywhere that they need to go in your house. And it will detail, perhaps more importantly, it will detail the proper diameter of pipe that you should be using to supply each of those fixtures. If the system is not designed properly, you could easily find yourself in a situation where different fixtures in the house maybe don't get adequate flow, or they might experience a big pressure or temperature fluctuation. You've probably been in an old home or have owned perhaps an old home that works this way. But there is no reason that a modern home should have to. Now separate from the hot and cold lines, Phil is also running a recirculation line. You'll get a good look at this later, but you can think of it as an extra line of hot water that runs from the water heater to the extreme far end of the house. It helps keep hot water very close to every sink and every shower in the whole place. The result is a shower that gets hot very quickly, even if you're a long ways from the water heater. Out what I was even thinking about a year ago. <laughs> 
No way to know. Cold's on the right. Cold, cold. Okay, we're back down here in the basement. And uh, the water heater was going to live over here in the corner. And now we're moving it over there into that corner. So we're just moving a few lines to where we can uh, hook it up better. Normally we're done under here. Unless there's a leak. So hopefully we don't have to come back. You guys be proud of me. <laughs> That's perfect. There's no way to save these PEX fittings, like cut them off the pipe and reuse them? Only if you want to try to get off Gilligan's Island and it's your only hope. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> warm them up, and if you leave enough tail on it like this, you can warm that up with a heat gun and sometimes pop them off. Uh -huh. or, or, you know, first split that ring off and then you can, but if it's cut off really short, you don't have nothing to pry, you know. Yeah. Sometimes a hundred bucks an hour ain't worth a three dollar fitting. Yeah. Sometimes you don't have any more and you need to. So yeah. it's just that the little rings around the fitting, if you cut them with the knife, that's where it's sealing. So you can damage the fitting by trying to get it apart. Got it. That's as short as you can make one. Because pretty soon the tip of this tool is going to go into the fitting and break it. We made that one extra loose so I don't have to worry about it not going in. That guy didn't go on all the way. Really irritating. Look, we we have a little slack to pull this. We got plenty of slack. First, I tried to split the pex ring without getting into this too far, but I did. And what had happened is the little ridge on the fitting that's doing all the sealing. That little ridge, I nicked it. I can feel it. I'll run my fingernail around there. I can touch it. So I can put this all back together. It might not leak. What a pain if it does. So I'm cutting the thing out. Doing it again. We have enough slack to pull back and forth a little bit, so make it a little more comfortable. But that's the point of trying to reuse one of these things. If you make a mistake, you can take and split that first ring and then try to pry the pipe off of it and you'll be okay. You'll be successful most of the time. But this time, not so much. So the, the tea we cut out was one by one by half. The only tee we had left was one by one by three quarter. And that's why we have a three quarter by half reducing coupler. That's all we had. And we're not going to go waiting for another part and run around town. Although that would make me a lot more money. <laughs> 
and that's why <laughs> this is done that way. When you dig a ditch, you don't want to just dig a random here to there because fittings don't come in random degrees. So you always want to dig a ditch and, and 45 it somewhere or 90 it somewhere. And the point of this is I'm going to drill a hole through here at a 45 degree angle so that a 45 degree fitting will match the hole nicely. And this is for the relief pipe of the water heater. And so we're going to try and penetrate the block underneath the siding so we don't have to worry about uh, the, the rain guard under the siding is never to be disturbed. The corbel gauge is a 45 so I'm just going to try and keep the, the world straight with that as I drill it. And there you have it. When you stick an, a Nupinor fitting on here, and this happens to get a drip when you turn it on right here, you can still tighten it and it'll spin inside the PEX. You know, I don't think it's designed to like spin 30 times, but I mean, you could put a crank around it one That's time. That's cool. So, huh. A lot of times I'll leave it, you know, I'll tighten it really well, but I'll, you know, not too tight. And everything's made so light anymore that the wall thickness in here is thin. so. The threads are tapered in a pipe thread, so the tighter you put it in, the more pressure is put on this to split it. Yeah. So anyway, so you can put it on too tight, and, and uh, the PEX makes it easy to just go back and tighten it up some more. And thank goodness they write UP on there, and that stands for something. This is a shower valve. This used to run the bathtub spout. If you use it for a bathtub, we just cap that off. A lot of times I'll put a little pipe dope on the threads, put a wrap of Teflon, a little pipe dope on the Teflon. If I don't want to be in a situation where I have to, to tighten it or, or do anything to stop it, that, that, that just means it's not going to leak. Uh -huh. But it's a whole bunch of labor and time to do it that way. But if I'm down in some pit and I, it's going to be difficult to tighten up later, I'll double goop it up, spit on it. <laughs> so I'm tightening these without even a backup wrench on here and they design all these things so nicely that you can't even get a backup wrench on the stuff very easily I'll bet you it hardly leaks at all well when I put Teflon on I'll, I never want to go over it that way mm. because it all gets pinched off and anything over flopping over the edge ends up floating on down and plugging up things and Causing havoc. Hot's on the left, cold's on the right, green side up. That's all you have to know. We're on a job and they're laying sod. And uh, their foreman kept yelling at the guy, is green side up. <laughs> Didn't know what that was all about. <laughs> Till I had to work with people under me. <laughs> Is it good?
to that. Yep. The neat thing about packs is we can pretend to be electricians. We're going to strap these up, but I'm going to keep in mind that if we ever had to do a repair upstairs in 50 years, it's often nice to be able to tug a little bit of pipe. So if you left enough, you know, room to get a tug out of it, somebody later on in life will thank you under their breath. Normally a plumber wouldn't think about that, but I'm the plumber that has to fix stuff. I don't usually put it in. So always have it in mind. How are you going to work on this later on? There are a few more parts to this plumbing system that are going to show up in some later episodes. Hooking up the water heater, the hose bibs, a few odds and ends. The important thing to know, however, is that you want the plumbing all the way done, including being thoroughly tested and inspected if it's required, before you insulate and drywall. You've got to carefully protect the pipes from nails and screws at every single place that there could be any unfortunate turn of events. You gotta strap and secure these things so there's no risk of rattling or rubbing. And if you can afford it, this expanding PEX is pretty much top of the line and is, from what I understand, a very long-term plumbing system. Gone are the days of threading and fitting galvanized steel pipes or sweating zillions of copper fittings in a house like this. And gone also are the days of even clamping and crimping the PEX pipe to the fittings. If there is a better system out there, put it in the comments below and someday we'll check it out. Thank you for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.